I got to attend um, one particular panel called Media and the Movement, um, which is pretty relevant because that's what we've been really heavily focused on here at the Progressive Army is movement building, being engaged as a progressive voice. You know, Ben has done a really good job of showcasing different information and stuff on his show. Project Sanity has has done stuff on their show. I do what I do on my show. So so it seemed very, very um, important. And the panel was a uh, consistent of Lee Fong from The Intercept and Sean King. And I am drawing a blank of the editor of Yes Magazine. Um, and there was another young woman on the panel as well. Um, kind of blanked them out. Uh, sorry, no diss. But um, it was a really good panel. And one of, the, one of the best things I think that I got out of that panel was from Sean King, who said he is not an independent journalist, right? He works for, he is a staff writer for the New York Daily News. He has been an independent journalist previously, but he is not one now, right? What he said, though, was he is able to do and say what he wants within a mainstream news outlet because he has the following to back up his message. And there was so much conversation about building our reach, building out opportunities for those voices, but also building up that support. Like we have to support the work. So I have to support the work of my fellow, you know, truth sayers out there. Um, you know, we, we need you to support us to make sure that we actually have representative, you know, information building and media access, right? Um, so I, I thought it was really good, but one of the interesting points, and this is actually a thread that kind of run throughout, that was an unspoken issue with the, the summit. Like I said, it was a great opportunity. You know, people came from all over and got a chance to meet and build. I got to sit down with women that I hadn't been working with, women and men I've been working with through Women for Bernie and African Americans for Bernie and People for Bernie and other organizations over the past year, had not met several people in real life in the flesh. And that was so valuable to actually sit down and have conversations you know, face real time with people, right? Um, there was no one, you know, definitive answer to the what's next question. A lot of people have their different ideas, you know, different organizations had their booths, shout out to People's Revolution. People's Revolution occupied, in, in true occupied fashion, occupied space <laughs> at the People Summit and, and, and basically utilized a booth that had been um, paid for by another organization that was not able to staff it. Um, so, I mean, there was, there was a lot going on, you know, I'm, some of you may have even saw on Twitter how Jill Stein was, um, miffed because she was not permitted to speak on Friday night. Um, it's not very clear exactly what happened or if she had been completely denied, you know, ability to be there at all. The Green Party did have a booth on site. They were tabling and, um, getting signatures on site as well without any issues. So it's, uh, that's not really clear. It does seem that maybe she showed up and wanted to speak and was told no. Um, if that is in fact the case, you can't just show up at events and demand to speak and then get upset about it. Like that's just kind of petty and not really a, a mature way of doing things. But anyway, um, but, the, but, the, but, but one of the things that happened there and that I think is a very good point about all of this movement building. We're so focused on a rah, rah moment and kumbaya and we're all together and we're all one and Bernie's for all of us. But here's the thing, we cannot disregard opportunities to address where we need improvement. We can not fail to address opportunities for where we have made miscalculations for things that continue to be overlooked and disregarded. So one of the things that in the session we were all in, the media and the movement session that Yvette Carnell Brown, um, Carnell Brown, <laughs> Yvette Carnell raised was the lack of support for black media by the left, by progressives, right? The lack of support, not just for, for, for uh, you know, black media, but for black voices in general. There were strategically placed voices of color throughout this weekend. But as I've made comments about safe spaces isolated over here and there, you know, of course, there was a great delegation on Juneteenth, which was you know, for those who are not aware, Juneteenth is, is June 19th. It is the day where the last slaves in Texas found out they were free. Um, so there was a great delegation of blackness represented there, but there was not necessarily a clear ability for voices of color or traditionally marginalized groups across all areas. We're in a session and trying to answer, ask questions. 
And, and at the outset, we want a diversity of opinions. We want a diversity of people speaking. Okay. I don't think we all as progressives have the same concept of what is considered diverse. Like not at all. It got to the point where three members of our table, we had five black women sitting at a table. We were pretty much right in front of the moderator in the panel. And we had five black women sitting at a table. And my, my, my mentor, Stacey Hopkins, who's been on the show before, um, had to make a sign because seven, it was either six or seven people all white had been picked all around the room, all around us as hands at our table remained up. And it was not until Stacy made a sign and people started taking pictures of the sign. It is when people started taking pictures of the sign that we finally got addressed and Vet was able, finally able to make her point concerning the lack of attention to not only black voices, but particularly the support for black media. And I thought this was a very interesting point, considering the fact that we've had all this conversation narrative around why Bernie Sanders did not do better with black people. Why are these progressive groups not doing better with black membership? You know, why do we not have more black people engaging with Democratic Socialists of America, for example, or progressive Democrats in certain areas? Right. Like some places do better. You know, some some places do better. But when we look at these things on a national level, the representation, what we think should be our 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 natural allegiances isn't panning out. And so she had a really good commentary around these issues, as well as she pushed back on this notion about citizen journalists and how anyone can just pick up and just become a journalist. And she's right, it is very, very hard work. I only do this once a week, it is so difficult. So that was just like one point of one, um, one point of one session I was, I participated in, but that was really good.